right, welcome to church tonight. Let's take our songbook, turn to page 327. Page 327, glad you're here tonight. Looking forward to a good Bible study and patch club tonight. Let's all stand and we'll sing Higher Ground, page 327. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining. May, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher round. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher. On that fourth, I want to scale tight and catch a gleam of glory bright but still i'll pray till heaven i found lord lead me on to higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land a higher plane than i have found lord plant my feet on high Father, we love you. We thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for uh, the uh, time we have to just be together tonight in church. I uh, love church, and Lord, I'm thankful for Wednesday night church. Lord, I pray that as we meet together, that you would meet with us. Lord, that all that we do tonight would just be uplifting, would be pleasing to you, draw us closer to you. And Lord, I pray that you would bless the Patch Club tonight, that the young folks would have a time of learning, help them understand it's it's not just about the fun and games, but it's about the learning as well. Lord, I pray that you bless them. Lord, be with those that aren't with us tonight because of health reasons and because of difficulties. Lord, we pray uh, just a special blessing upon them. Lord, I thank you for those that came tonight. Lord, it, uh, Lord took time out of their uh, midweek and Lord, here on purpose. Lord, I'm thankful for the Wednesday night crowd. Lord, I pray that you give each one a special blessing for being here tonight. But we sure do love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We'll check and see if anyone needs a prayer card real quick. We got all that covered, I think. And so you can be filling those out. We'll collect them in a moment. And we're going to let the young folks uh, to be dismissed. So you all go ahead and stand, and you can head on out with Miss Miller. <clears throat> all right. Very good. Head back out to the back there. Need some uh, directional signs here, I guess. So, all right. Very good. on Sunday, we'll put that on the back of the uh, the back table, and then you can just sign up for which item that you'd like to bring, and we'll look forward to having a, a good meal out there. Can you believe next week is Thanksgiving already? Uh, just uh, one week away, and by I tell you what, it in a way 2020 has went by quick uh, but in a way it's been awful slow too it's been one of those interesting years uh, but thanksgiving of course uh, next week we won't have church on wednesday uh, so don't forget about that we'll be here on tuesday instead uh, but it's going to be a special service special thanksgiving service uh, the young people are going to be singing in the service uh, that night uh, a thanksgiving type of song and uh, we'll just look forward to a good time and then, of course, uh, this Sunday night, we'll have our fellowship after church. And so a time of fellowship. And um, let's see, uh, there was somebody put it like this. Uh, we're going to have, uh, how did they say that? I can't remember. Something about preaching, pies, and something else. There's three, three Ps to it. 
and uh, maybe it was prayer, I don't know. No, it was praise. It was, it was praises, preaching, and pie. That's what they were having on Sunday night. Is that, that'd be pretty catchy for this week for sure, but uh, just a dessert fellowship on Sunday night, and that'll be good. We'll look forward to that. And so just a few announcements tonight, but uh, look forward to the holiday season, and I hope that, uh, you know, they're trying to cancel Thanksgiving. Have you been seeing that on the news? And uh, amazing, amazing thing, and I believe I'm going to have Thanksgiving anyway. They said, uh, here, here's what I saw. This is pretty good. They said, now, uh, y your gatherings are limited to only six people. Do you see this already? Miss Felton saw this. Said, your gatherings are limited to six people, but said uh, funerals are limited to 30 people. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a funeral for my pet turkey, and uh, we're going invite, to uh, invite you over for this funeral. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that's a good idea. And that's what we'll do next week. We're not having Thanksgiving. We're having a funeral for my pet turkey, and uh, we'll enjoy <laughs> remembering. Uh, boy, he was a good turkey, too. He just uh, he gave his all, didn't he? Total sacrifice. and That's right. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. But anyway, we'll look forward to having a, a few family members come in. And my my in-laws will be with us next week, and, and so we look forward to seeing them. They've been just anxious to get up here. They feel like they've uh, been away too long, so we'll look forward to having them with us. Anyway, uh, those are the announcements, so uh, we'll, we'll keep those things in mind. Let's turn uh, over to... Uh, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. I looked it up before and I forgot the number. 281. 281. This is a great song written by Fanny Crosby. And uh, the message of it, tremendous message. And the Lord, don't pass me by. I need you. We're thankful for the salvation. And let's sing it out, page 281. Ready? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling throne of mercy find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep contrition help my unbelief Savior Savior humble broken spirit save me by thy grace Savior Savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by
My wife had her Sunday school activity with her class a couple days ago on Monday, and we had a good time. She recruited me to go along and help with the activity, and so we uh, took the church van, had a good group. I think there ended up being 16 of us total. Of course, six of it was my family, but then had a good group of girls that went, went to Columbia to Sky Zone, and we jumped around like a bunch of fools on those trampolines and uh, didn't break anything, amen, and uh, had a good time, and then went to CeCe's Pizza. Kids love pizza. I hadn't been there in a while, and uh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm uh, getting older or maybe just uh, something what quite, quite right, but that pizza did not settle well with me at all, and uh, maybe it's all that jumping around first. I don't know, but I was sick that night. I didn't have food poisoning. It just didn't set well with me. But anyway, we had a good time uh, on that uh, with that trip on Monday. The, the ladies' banquet, I forgot to mention that, or not banquet, Sunday school class activity on uh, Saturday, December 5th. I've not been announcing any times yet. What time is that? Is it 10 o'clock? 11 o'clock. And is there a cost, or they're just going to pay when they get there, or whatever, pay whatever they get there at the uh, deal? So meet there at 11 or at the church at 11? Meet at Taylor's Bake Shop at 11 for that ladies' Sunday school class. So uh, that would be good. All right, let me, um, I want to give this announcement by way of prayer request just so it's uh, so folks can know to pray for this family we don't have our prayer request on the internet at the end of the service we cut the recording so we can just have our family time uh, prayer request uh, but I want to mention this <clears throat> before we get started with the message uh, we took on a couple new missionaries for support this uh, year As a matter of fact last month uh, we voted to support the Jackson family missionaries to India and then the uh, Marco family there in the Philippines. The Jacksons, you remember, they were with us uh, back in September. I think it was toward the end of September for our Mission Sunday. Uh, Brother, Brother Braxton preached a really a good job preaching. Uh, I think he t preached Sunday school and the morning service. And then they had a meeting in St. Louis for the evening, and they sang. He, he's a really good singer as well. Uh, his wife, Elizabeth, and it, they're going to India and uh, you might remember she was expecting, uh, uh, pregnant with twins. Uh, that was them. And uh, her due date was not until, I, I think, um, the beginning part of January, end of December, January. And uh, I'll not give the entire story, I guess, but uh, she, she ended up getting sick. And my understanding was she ended up getting uh, the COVID virus. And all this is public knowledge. It's on their Facebook page. She ended up getting COVID, and I don't know exactly all the details, um, but she ended up having to have an emergency C-section. I believe it was 27 weeks, and the twins were born, and uh, two, two girls. Um, fast forward a few days, about eight or nine days, I think, um, after birth, uh, one of the twins passed away just I think two days ago and um, they they were actually born with COVID the, the baby so uh, they said on their Facebook page this may be the first in the United States uh, that that they know of of actually um, a a mom giving birth and then the baby's having the COVID virus so um, obviously pretty heartbreaking for them and a family uh, the other uh, girl is obviously going to be in uh, the NICU for a while. They were only uh, right around two pounds when they were born. Uh, but let's pray for this, uh, this family, the Jackson family. And I tried to call him today. I got his voicemail, and then he returned a text to me, said, thank you for the voicemail and your prayers. And uh, they are trying to stay positive and encouraged. They keep uh, saying things on their on their Facebook page, you know, God is good and, and, and listing Bible verses to try to be an encouragement. 
uh, obviously to themselves, but uh, it's, it's difficult. And so uh, just uh, it's, it's something that's near to us by just knowing them and being able to support them. And so uh, pray for that family that the Lord would give them grace and comfort uh, through this time. I imagine they'll probably have a service uh, for the one baby girl uh, here in the near future. So that'll be a difficult uh, day as well. Uh, but I wanted to mention that uh, so to be on the recording for those that might uh, listen to it and they can know. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll definitely uh, definitely look into that. I, I was hoping to get to talk to him and, and see maybe what you know what was going on and um, you know they, they they don't have a home I don't know if you remember they graduated Bible college last year they had just an apartment and when they hit deputation uh, they literally moved out and have have no place to call home and he they were planning he told me when they were here that when January came they were they were going to rent a place for one month. They found some housing there uh, where the doctor and everybody is, kind of like I think you call it corporate housing. I want to say, uh, you know, folks that come in and work for a month or two and then leave, and they could rent a place for a month. And uh, they were just going to take a month off uh, there and then get right back on the road. So uh, I'm sure family is probably open their homes and things to them, but still. I'm sure they have some needs, so I think that'd be a blessing uh, that we could do that, and so uh, we'll look into doing that. Take your Bibles. Let's go to the book of Ruth tonight. Look forward to our Bible study in Ruth chapter 2. And we're going to get to uh, part of the the study where it gets good tonight. It, it started getting good already. Uh, well, it's all been good, but but last week we uh, we finished up talking about the godly characteristics of growing Christians, and we looked at faith, uh, love, and then we looked at hope last week. And what a great uh, great just a study on those three words and see how it's played out here in the story of Ruth. But tonight we're going to look at uh, the next part of this story this love story and uh, tonight we're going to talk about the kindness of the kinsmen the kindness of the kinsmen and of course uh, we all know what this means for Ruth now, meeting this kinsman meeting this redeemer it's a beautiful love story and we're going to look at part one there'll be uh, a couple different uh, lessons behind this thought as we go through uh, chapter number three but tonight, let's look at Ruth chapter 3. We'll begin in verse number 1. And we're going to, again, look at the kindness of the kinsmen. And let's look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Oh, listen now what she tells Ruth to do in verse 3. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. Oh, listen. She was telling him, she said, hey, go get cleaned up and put some perfume on, and hey, why don't you go down there and see if you can... Uh, spend a little time with this man that you've now met. And it shall be when he lieth down, thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. She said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And we'll look at this passage of Scripture and get into the kindness of, of the kinsmen. Lord, I pray that you bless the Bible study tonight. Lord, may it be a help to us and Lord, open our eyes for what you'd have for us tonight. Father, we're thankful for this story of, of Ruth and Lord, how she uh, met Boaz. And Father, it's a beautiful love story. And Lord, we have to always be thankful when we think of this story for you. 
for sending your son to die for us, to redeem us. Lord, it's just a beautiful love story. And Father, for that, we're grateful. We're very thankful for our salvation. Lord, would you help us now and give us understanding? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's back up just for a moment to the lesson last week. We talked about the hope of Naomi. And uh, we'll just remind ourselves that uh, Naomi began to now have hope in the future. We remember how uh, she, you know, when, the, when she first said she was going back home and, and when she first got back home there to Bethlehem, she wasn't in a very good place. Uh, she was very bitter. Uh, she was very, uh, I think, questioning what was going on in her life. And, but I believe she began to realize that God still loved her. Uh, God still had a plan for her. He was going to work all things out for his good as long as she uh, loved him and, 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 and stayed close to the Lord. And we find that she began to have hope in the future. And, and, and really, it, it was just an assurance in her life that God was going to work out everything just fine. And it's a great story because we often face things in our life. Uh, may we just say things uh, that are happening now that are very uncertain uh, that you know I was talking to to someone today that one of our church members and and you know we thought uh, my goodness look at the time that we're in and not just the, the pandemic and, and and the uncertainty of the election still but just so many people sick in our church and it just seems like everywhere you look people are having difficulty and problem and it's almost overwhelming but then we remind ourselves, Naomi's hope gave her the assurance that God will work everything out just fine. And that's the, the reality of things is God will work things out according to his purpose. Nothing takes God by surprise. He knows what's going to happen. And the providence of God says this, I'm in control and I'm going to use what you may not like to work things out for my plan for my good and for my glory. We're going to look at chapter 3 on how God begins to do these things, how God begins to work all things together for his good to those that love him. As we see Boaz here and the kinsman uh, redeemer that he is to Ruth. Uh, let's look at, first of all, the plan Naomi made to help Ruth. Uh, number one tonight, the plan Naomi made to help Ruth. We see that uh, she, you know, obviously loved her daughter-in-law. She loved Ruth. She loved her in a way that uh, she called her her own daughter. And, and I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing when a family can be that close. I, uh, I enjoy uh, my wife's side of the family. Uh, I enjoy my in-laws. I enjoy uh, her cousins. I enjoy her aunts and uncles. And uh, it, it's, it's just like they're my family. I think that's a great thing. Um, and that, you know, even with my in-laws, I can, I can call her uh, mom and I can call him dad and, and vice versa. Uh, that's a great thing that, that there's just a, a love for each other. You know, there's some families that don't do that. Yeah, there's some in my family that, uh, I've never heard them call my dad, dad, or my mom, mom. It's always Alan and Terry. And, and I guess that's fine, you know, but it, it seems to me it's just a little bit distant. It's a little bit uh, maybe just, I don't know, it's just not family to me, but that's just the way it is. And uh, but, but Naomi called her daughter, and we see that she had a concern for others. She told Naomi, uh, told Ruth in verse number one, she said, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? You can very much see that Naomi was concerned for her. Uh, boy, that's a picture of what Christ uh, had for us. He had a concern for us. The Bible says in Philippians chapter uh, two, I believe it is, that the Lord Jesus uh, took upon the form of a servant and uh, he came to give himself for others. 
He said, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, what's he talking about? The mind of putting others first. Naomi had a concern for her daughter. And we can, you know, look at this, and it's pretty amazing as you go from chapter 1 to chapter 3. Because in chapter 1, she was pretty selfish. She was pretty stuck on herself. And now we find she is so concerned with Ruth. Back then, Naomi wanted Ruth to stay in Moab in chapter 1 and verse number 8. You remember that? Ruth wanted to go with her, and she said, no, you stay here. You, you, you're not coming with me. You stay back here in Moab. Back then, Naomi didn't care if Ruth knew the God of Israel. She didn't care if Ruth had a relationship with God and began to follow him and his will for her life. She didn't want that for her. She was in a bad place. Matter of fact, the Bible says in verse number 15 of, of Ruth chapter 1, she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. She said, Hey, Ruth, why don't you just go back to Moab and keep serving your false gods? Well, we've come a long way, haven't we? I believe as Naomi began to think, of and, and to live for others, she was once again pleasant to be around as her name initially meant. She wanted to change her name to, uh, to uh, Mara, verse number 20, because she said, the Lord hath dealt very bitterly with me. But no, she has her name still. It's Naomi in chapter 3. I believe she's getting back to that pleasant meaning that her name really has. You know why? Here's why. I tell you, it's so true. It's the acrostic. J-O-Y brings joy. Jesus first. Here it is now. Others second. And yourself last. You can't get those mixed up and have joy. I I've seen Christians that, that they will put Jesus first, but then they'll put themselves second and others last. And they're not joyful. They're not truly happy Christians. They, they, they're miserable. Uh, you, you for sure can't have it any other way but Jesus first. And then others second and yourself last. It's interesting, as I kind of alluded to already, that nowhere, at least in Scripture, do we ever find anyone calling Naomi Mara. She requested that in verse number 20. She said to them, Call me Mara. She changed her own name. But it's interesting. We don't find it recorded where anyone called her that. I believe because she simply, once again, started living with a concern for others. You know, isn't that what our life is about? If you live this life for yourself, you're going to be miserable. Because this world is full of letdowns and failures oh sure there's enjoyable times uh, but but listen you know uh, this world isn't my home I, i'm just passing through the greatest joy i can have in this life is helping others it's also interesting to see as naomi began to get her joy back I believe we can look at her life and draw this uh, principle that being a blessing to others is the best remedy for bitterness. For, bitter, for bitterness. Uh, bitterness comes. Uh, it's probably knocked on your door. I know it's for sure knocked on my door. But I believe I've learned the secret to bitterness in overcoming that. And it definitely has to do with being a blessing to others. You know, bitterness will just destroy a person. It really does. It'll just destroy a person. And I've said this so many times in my definition of bitterness. But bitterness is like drinking a bottle of poison and then waiting on the other person that you're bitter at to die. They're never going to die, but you're going to hurt yourself. And so... It's interesting to see that as she began to live for others, I believe her bitterness began to leave her 
heart. Her hope changed her concern from herself to others. And her concern for others changed her countenance from the bitter person she had become back into the pleasant person God had meant for her to be. Hey, listen, if you ever find yourself a bitter person, mark it down. That's not what God intended for you to be. If you ever find yourself discouraged, hey, listen, mark it down. God didn't intend for you to be that way. No, not at all. So we have to ask ourselves this question. What can I do to get over that? Oh, here's a great answer right here. Live for others. I don't remember who it was, but I remember reading a story. And this lady had a difficult uh, problem in her life. and She was very discouraged. She was very upset. And the solution for that was, why don't you go bake a pie and take it to so-and-so? She thought, this is the silliest thing. <laughs> Wow, you know, how is this going to help me in my discouragement? But she said, okay, and she did it. And she realized, you know what? I kind of enjoyed that. And then she made a pie and took it to someone else. The next week, the preacher said, how are you doing? She said, you know, I've been so busy baking pies this week, I've not had much time to think about myself. Oh, it's true. Get busy doing for others. You'll be amazed how little time you have to spend on yourself. Naomi began to think of and live for others. We could look back at the two brothers that were the first brothers in the world, Cain and Abel. And he asked God a very selfish question that showed his selfishness in his life. His bitterness. And the Lord asked Cain, he said, Hey, Cain, have you seen Abel? Of course, Abel was dead, and God knew that. And he replied, Am I my brother's keeper? Begin to show his selfish and bitter heart. And that's the philosophy of the world. The world says, Hey, don't worry about anybody else except yourself. You just look out for number one, and you take care of yourself. And listen, we're seeing uh, in our society that uh, there is a culture of people only wanting what is best for them. And they'll go to any extreme to make sure that they're number one. So we see Naomi beginning to change a little bit from her selfishness into concern for others. Uh, turn with me to Philippians chapter uh, 2. I alluded to this already, but let's just touch base here. And I'll make a statement about this verse. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 3. The Bible says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Uh, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You see, dying to self and living for others is what true Christianity is all about. I die to self and I live for others. That's why it's so important to serve the Lord and to find a way that you can minister to others. Find a way through the church that you can uh, help minister to others. There, there's so many people that need the love of Christ. And you never know when they might be in your path. But if I have this selfish attitude, I'm not going to be looking for ways to be a blessing. I'm not going to be looking for ways to tell folks about Christ. The theme of the Lord Jesus could be summed up in that one word. The one word called others. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 28. Here's what the Bible says, Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now listen, if the Lord Jesus could 
uh, come from heaven and leave all its splendor and glory. Uh, leave all the things that he left to come here to earth. You would think surely he would deserve something down here on earth. Surely a nice house to live in at least. Uh, surely, uh, uh, you know, uh, some, some comforts of this world. But the Bible says, no, that's not why he came. He came to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, I'm so thankful that the Lord put others first. Naomi took the care and welfare of her daughter-in-law personally, as I mentioned earlier, and called her my daughter. She considered Ruth uh, to be one of her very own. The Bible says in verse number one again, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? She called her my daughter, and the rest that she spoke of uh, was, uh, let's look at that phrase, shall I not seek rest for thee? Th that's not meaning a place to sleep. The word rest isn't talking about a place to lay my head down. It's not talking about a place to kick back and to relax from a hard day's wor uh, work. The word rest here that she's speaking of uh, means this. It means that I would uh, seek for Ruth a settlement in the married state. It's talking about um, how now I can uh, settle down and I can enjoy a married life and, and have that, that rest is what it's called, the rest. It's a term used talking about being settled in the married state. We think about what Naomi said in uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 12. She said of herself, she said, Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. So Naomi knew, she said, you know what? Uh, my husband is gone now. She said, I, I realize that I'm too old. Uh, I'm not going to get married again. I'm going to live the rest of my life out as a widow. But this didn't keep her from desiring a husband for her daughter-in-law. This didn't keep her from wishing her well and wanting her to go on and have a better life. And she hoped that Ruth could marry again and be led out of this life of poverty that they were experiencing and begin to have some things again in life and enter into a life of rest. It's an interesting word as we think of the word rest, and it honestly speaks of what a, uh, a marriage should be. We could say this, married couples should be in a state of rest. A state of rest. What do you mean? Where I am satisfied. Uh, let me give you a couple of thoughts behind that uh, as far as a marriage. First of all, wondering affections should be laid to rest. When I said I do to my wife back in 2002, I said, you know what? You are all that I want. You are all that I need. And my promise to her in those vows, it says, uh, and keep thee unto her as long as you both shall live. What does that mean? It means this, my affection for any other female is now put to rest. You see the word rest there. And the Bible very clearly speaks of these type of things in the book of Proverbs. Uh, the heart of a married couple should be fixed and cleaving to one another, resting from any desires of finding someone else. And then and only then, Look what the Bible says in verse number 1 again of chapter 3. My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, marriage for thee, that it may be well with thee. She said, Ruth, I sure want you to be happy again. I sure want you to find God's will for your life. And I'm going to pray to that extent. I want you to find that person. And it leads us to mentioning this. That it's so important 
that we would choose our spouse so carefully. You know, too many couples know nothing of rest with each other. There's not a state of rest. They've not put away those other desires, perhaps. You know, I believe that marriage ought to be a little bit of heaven on earth. I truly believe that. I don't believe for a second there's any such thing as a perfect marriage. Why? Because we're imperfect people, right? But marriage should be a little bit of heaven on earth. Our family should know that. Our kids should see that. Our acquaintances should know that about us. But too many, uh, too many marriages know nothing of rest. Too many marriages end up being the greatest source of restlessness. Oh, it's so important. And I try to teach whenever I get the opportunity to a young person. It's so important that you marry, right? I believe, yes, it, it ought to be, number one, God's will who you marry. You ought to pray and fast about that thing. But then uh, you ought to make sure that you actually are compatible with each other. I, I've seen it in my life. I've seen a young Christian girl marry a young Christian boy. You say, hey, it's got to be God's will. They're both saved. They're both in church. They're both Christians. Uh, no problem here. Let's get married. Wait a minute. There's no compatibility. There's no rest. And all of a sudden now you've got two young... I've seen it. it I, I can think of people right now. You've got two godly young people that married each other. And they're finding out a couple years into this thing. This just ain't all what I thought it was going to be. But yet they love the Lord and they've made vows to each other. And, and, and they're not going to get divorced. But... Man, they don't seem happy. Oh, it's so important that, uh, that, that we pray and we make sure we marry right. It's, yes, important to marry a Christian and a godly person. But it's also important to marry somebody that you actually like. <laughs> Someone that you actually have things in common with. Because a lifetime is pretty long, isn't it? Too many marriages end up being restless you know it'd be interesting to know how much better marriages would be like if we put these things into perspective before we got married I'm going to close with these thoughts tonight and then we'll continue on next week in this chapter but Some things to think about in marriage. If you're married, seek to give your spouse the rest that they deserve instead of fussing and living in turmoil. Let's learn to take things to the Lord. Let's learn to love each other for who they are. And I tell you what, let's learn to practice what Naomi did, putting others first. You know, if I put my wife first and I put all of my selfish desires last, I'm going to have a happy marriage. But if all that I want in my marriage is for her to do this for me and her to uh, have me three meals a day on the table and for her to always, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have a happy marriage. I tell my wife often, I don't expect her to do anything for me. I, you know what? I, I love my wife. I need my wife. I do. But you know what? I'm not going to say, hey, where's my, where's my supper at tonight? If, if it's not on the table, guess what? I'm not going to fuss at her about it. I'll go fix it myself. I'll fix supper tonight. I don't mind. Maybe I don't have a shirt ironed. You know what? What's wrong with me picking up an iron and ironing that shirt? Ain't nothing wrong with that. I can iron a shirt. You understand what I'm trying to say? Now, my wife's a great wife. She is, I mean... She's wonderful. I can't brag on her enough. But I don't have an attitude where I expect those things. You put the other first. Oh, you'd be amazed at how much happier relationships would be. And next week, we're going to realize that because Naomi is concerned about others, she is now in a position to counsel others. 
And that's exactly what she's going to do. And we're going to find out in our next lesson how she went down. And we, we kind of got into it, but didn't have time to, uh, to jump into these verses. But she goes down to Boaz. Oh, we see a sweet love story begin to develop. And we'll get into that next week. So uh, continuing on the kinsmen, the kindness of the kinsmen. And it's, it's just a great, great story. Father, thank you for this study tonight. We pray that you would help us to, Lord, just take one truth tonight from this one gold nugget and, Lord, uh, apply it to our life this week. And would I thank that gold nugget, that truth tonight, would be to put others first. Would you help us in our own families and homes to practice that, uh, not just in our homes, but, Father, out in, in our workplaces, out in the folks we come in contact with in the week. And, Lord, so we could truly have that joy that, we need in our life. Lord, we thank you for giving us that example of coming here for others. And Lord, what a blessing that is. Lord, we pray now that you'd bless our prayer time as we go over our list, many needs tonight. And Lord, we ask for your help and intervention in each one. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's go ahead and collect our prayer cards. Brother Carol.